you as a public servant to uphold, protect, and promote the rights of women. And please accept this statement as an apology. Maraming salamat. Kong Raj, Kong Suwan. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, una po sa lahat, naikiramay po tayo sa yung anim na sundalo na nasawi sa encounter in Lanao del Norte more, more than three weeks ago. Uh, naikiramay po tayo sa pamilya ni Corporal Ray Anthony Salvador. Corporal Raylan Tapinit, Corporal Rodel Mobida, Private First Class Tornito, Private Mikarl John Lumingkit, at saka si Private James Poras. Congrats. Okay. Uh, for today's first question, may call on uh, Isa Abendano. Ni Pastor Apollo Kibuloy na hindi talaga siya dadalo sa hearing po bukas ng House Committee on Legislative Franchises. Ang katwiran, wala naman daw po siyang kinalaman sa operations ng SMNI at sa issue ng franchise. Uh, first question po, uh, ano po yung possible na mangyayari, katulad din daw po ba sa Senado na ipapaaresto siya, ikokontempt siya. And the second question, uh, si former President uh, Rodrigo Duterte po ay naitalaga bilang uh, caretaker or administrator ng properties po ni Pastor Kibuloy sa Kingdom of Jesus Christ. So ano po yung nakita niyo implication? Meron bang uh, parang may plano ba dito? Ano po yung nababasa po ninyo? Thank you. Um, well, on the first part of your question, I think um, Pastor Kibuloy has to respect the legislative process of Congress. Uh, he was invited and he was asked to present himself so that he can clarify issues regarding um, the investigations being conducted by the Committee on Franchise. Um, yes, I understand that he sent a letter, um, but I wouldn't want to preempt um, what the committee would decide with regards to the actions to be taken. But personally, dahil ako po yung nag-deliver ng privilege speech tungkol sa SMNI nung nakaraang taon, vital po kasi yung information ni, uh, ni Pastor Kibuloy. Uh, dahil naniniwala po kami, uh, meron po siyang alam at may kinalaman po siya para... Uh, mas lalong mapag-aralan ng committee yung nabanggit na mga violations ng SMNI at ng Suarezug doon sa franchise na kanilang pinaghahawakan. So I don't think the pastor has anything to fear. I mean, this is a, a legislative franchise committee hearing. Um, we have done this in the past. Many times, um, resource persons have been invited. Many times, resource persons have presented themselves. So I don't think uh, Pastor Kibuloy should be an excuse from the many people that have presented themselves and became resource persons for any issue that, how, that the House has taken. So um, with regards to how the committee will act on that, um, I, I will leave that to the better judgment of uh, the Committee on Franchise. On uh, part two ng tanong mo with regards to the administrator, uh, um, of course, karapatan naman po ni Pastor Kibuloyon na italaga ang ating dating Pangulo bilang administrador ng uh, Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Um, naniniwala po ako na uh, bilang dating Pangulo, uh, siya po ay magsisilbing daan upang siguraduhin ako ano man po ang mga legal processes na uh, kakailanganin natin upang malaman ang mga um, questions of law that is now being faced by um, KO, Kingdom of Jesus Christ, Swarasug, and all the other assets um, will be available to the committee. So, ang hinahabol naman po talaga natin dito ay yung katotohanan. Ang hinahabol naman po talaga natin dito ay yung karapatan. At sisiguraduhin po natin na ito po ay dadaan sa maayos at tamang proseso dito po sa Kongreso. 
Um, just to add to that point, siguro, on the first part, uh, the first question on uh, the statement, uh, hindi po yun bago, no? Um, with all due respect to the, whatever sentiment they may have, during the initial deliberations that we've had doon sa hearing po sa committee, uh, nagpadala rin po ng abogado si Pastor Kibuloy at uh, hindi na po bago yung katwira na yun na wala daw pong kinalaman and um, uh, wala na po siya sa SMNI. But I think we have to understand that uh, after multiple deliberations already, um, the committee has seen fit to actually invite Pastor Kibuloy. So um, whether or not the reason will stand, we'll have to see po. But as far as we're concerned, under the powers of Congress, uh, kailangan po mag po ni Pastor. No? With that, I would like to renew my uh, call as the primary, as the principal sponsor, po, no? uh, principal author of that bill uh, on the SMNI uh, revocation. Uh, we call on Pastor Kibuloy to attend po, no? um, because uh, like, we've all, like we've always said, uh, this would be the best opportunity to explain his side. Kasi po, inakikita po namin, uh, na, although we understand po, no, yung statement po nila ngayon ay dahil uh, wala na po sila sa SMNI, uh, wala na po silang kinalaman, hindi na po relevant, pero on the contrary naman po, yung mga ibang resource persons were giving conflicting statements. Hindi nga po namin mag-clarify kailan umalis po si Pastor Kibuloy, kailan nag-take over si uh, Pastor Akobo, hindi nga po uh, straight yung records ng SEC, kaya nga po we would like to invite him. So that he could be able to clear it out, and um, there's n nothing else but to gain pono from his appearance, because all he has to do is appear and explain to the committee on ano po talaga yung timeline ng events dun sa SMNI, and maybe from then we could have a clearer picture kung paano po talaga mina manage yung SMNI. So I don't think, uh, just to repeat pono, it doesn't stand po yung reason na yun na they will preempt attendance in the investigation dahil wala daw po kinalaman. The committee has seen that he has everything to do po with the, uh, with the uh, investigation. That's why we renew our invitation to him. Now, po on the second part, uh, of course, there are very little uh, prohibitions po, no, to uh, a former president. Uh, as a private person, they are free to take on any roles that may be offered to him. And we welcome and we respect that. Po, no? But yung question, po, no, if there are any implications, I would say wala naman po siguro. Tuloy pa rin naman po yung both, uh, at least for our part here sa House, tuloy naman po yung inquiry. And uh, we don't see any um, uh, effect po from that. Uh, it remains to be seen, po, of course. We don't know in what manner an administrator will be uh, participating. Pero tuloy pa rin po yung ating inquiry, if that is the question. Uh, yun lang po. Salamat. To add lang po, I think it's important to remember that uh, the power to compel attendance is very important for the House of Representatives in order to make effective and wise judgments regarding legislation that it aims to, to make. And that's why it's very important for our resource persons to appear in Congress so that we will have informed decisions. Um, just to add, no, and to end. Alam mo itong SMNI, tuwing lumalabas po sila, ang parati nilang ipinagmamalaki yung katotohanan, yung tama. So kung totoong katotohanan na tama lang, eh di pumunta po kayo dito at i-share nyo po kung ano ba talaga yung panig ninyo. Di ba? Bakit po kayo uh, natatakot? Bakit kayo nagtatago? Kasi, I mean, it, you know, it begs a lot of questions when it comes to the integrity and sincerity of SMNI, of the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, when it comes to um, investigations regarding the legality of their franchise. So, ang pakiusap ko lang po sa kanila, Magpakatotoo kayo doon sa sinisigaw ninyong tama at katotohanan. Pumunta po kayo dito sa House of Representatives. Wala naman ko yung dapat ikatakot. Pakakailin pa namin kayo ng masarap. Sagutin nyo lang po yung mga katanungan ng ating mga mambabatas. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Kat Porbes from Radio Pilipinas. Ayan, uh, good morning po mga Kongs. Uh, first question lang po muna no, uh, kay Kong Lord and Suwan, since siyang po yung medyo bago po dito. Uh, kung uh, uh, kayo po yung uh, nagpaabot ng tulong po dun sa mga sugatan nating sundalo from the encounter uh, dun sa Lanawa del Norte, baka po may, pwede nyo po maibahagi, uh, kamusta po sila at uh, ano pa po yung mga inaasahan po na mabibigay po natin sa kanilang tulong? So, I was very honored to be the one to uh, to give the the aid that was yung 
yung pinadala ni Speaker by the orders of the President sa mga wounded soldiers natin. So, seven po sila na binigyan natin ng financial aid, um, educational aid, and livelihood aid. Seven sila, pero isa doon, wala na. Kasi isa siya sa mga nasawi. So, it was, you know, it was also very inspiring for us and a reminder for us legislators to really support our armed forces because it was a it was a face to face encounter for me personally as a first term congressman that our soldiers are facing incredible amounts of risk they are they are putting their lives on the line for the safety of our country and nakita ko talaga na yung wounded sa dito sa, sa kamay, hindi sila maka, they can't even get up to receive the aid. So, yun. And also the facilities in, I'm, I'm very happy na nagka-budget tayo for the facilities in Camp Evangelista in Cagayan de Oro City. May, meron tayong nailaan na budget for the upgrading of the hospital facilities. So, I was glad for that. And again, I was very honored to be the one to na magbigay ng yung financial aid galing kay speaker and also on the on the orders of the president. Thank you po. Um Kong's yung next ko pong question is from an interview po uh, over the weekend kay Senator Sani Angara. Uh, kanya pong sinabi na mahihirapan siya bilang uh, subcommittee chair na nagdumidinig po dun sa RBH 6 para maipasa yung kanilang version na economic chacha at kanya pong hinihiling na dapat tumulong na si Pangulong uh, Marcos Jr. at uh, kumbinsihin yung mga senador na hindi po pabor sa RBH 6. Kailangan pa po ba talaga ng tulong ng uh, Pangulo para po makumbinsi yung mga kasamang senador? Um, on that statement po no, ni uh, Senator Angara, um, I think the messaging was clear. Uh, it was made very, very clear for us at least, the signal from the President was when we were celebrating National Constitution Day po ba yun? When he spoke before Phil Consa na tuloy po dapat ang cha-cha. So I don't see any reason how our good, our colleagues in the Senate would need any more convincing po, no? Because uh, precisely, first and foremost, the, all the convincing that they need should be done sa subcommittee naman po, no? We should be deciding this matter on the merits of the bill itself rather than the personalities that are pushing for it. So for our colleagues in Senate to have to rely on further convincing by the President um, I, I, I think on our part, we just want to renew our calls for them to just stick to yung RBH 6 nila, hear out the research persons, and uh, really push for it po, no? Kasi, um, I don't know if they would say the same thing. Nakita po namin dito with our RBH 7, there is uh, no, all to gain, nothing to lose. So the reason itself, uh, that should be enough reason for the senators themselves to move on it. But yun nga, uh, to repeat, yung if they need further convincing, uh, I wouldn't know. We can't speak on behalf of any other person, but it shouldn't be the personalities po, no, behind. That shouldn't be the reason for pushing for cha-cha. But again, the messaging was clear. Nung feel konsa, tuloy po dapat yung cha-cha. Well, on my part, I think they've had many and numerous uh, hearings about economic uh, amendments for our constitution. And that should be sufficient information and knowledge for the good senators to determine why it is necessary for our country, similar to what we did in the House. Uh, we've, we've conducted hearings that lasted up until 11 p.m. Uh, in the evening just so that we can weigh the pros and cons of amending our constitution. And a call to the president and asking him to convince senators further, um, I think is a little bit um, asking for a little bit too much of the president. Because given that the president has already mentioned it many times in many occasions, 
given that the president has stated his position on economic uh, amendments na kinikailangan na po talaga ng bansa. I mean, and the writing is very clearly written on the wall. Hindi na nga po tayo nahuhuli. Tapos na yung karera. <laughs> Nauna na yung iba. Uh, and kung titignan nyo naman doon sa economic ay sa educational performance ng mga Pilipino, talagang nahi, na, naiiwan na rin tayo. So anong pa bang pagpukumbinsi ang kinikailangan natin dito? But kung yun po ang kinikailangan para makumbinsi ang mga senador na talagang kinikailangan ito, uh, well, I think that would be the position of our good uh, Uh, Senate Finance Chair Committee Sani, Sani Angara, but kami naman po dito sa House, uh, clearly, from from where we stand, um, the country needs it. The Filipino people need it. Our economy needs it. And if you want to push the, the country forward, the next generation of Filipinos need it. Okay, uh, Billy Vegas from Abante Politico for our next questions. Uh, magandang umaga po. Uh, hingi lang po ako ng reaction. Una po dun sa Okta Research Survey showing na 77% lang ng mga Pinoyong willing na idepensa yung Pilipinas. Tapos number two po dun sa first uh, US Presidential Trade and Investment Mission sa Pilipinas. First time daw po kasi ginawa yun sa, ng Amerika sa Pilipinas. Yun lang po. Yeah, so unang-una doon sa Okta, I, well, I'm very happy with 77, although I'll be ecstatic when if, when if it's 100%. It shows indeed that nationalism and patriotism among Filipinos is still very strong. Uh, wag po natin kakalimutan na iisang diwa, iisang bansa tayong lahat. Eh, at kung kinikailangan, we need to defend our country Uh, earlier on, uh, Congressman Suan uh, reminded us of um, the courage that our uniformed personnel uh, go through day in and day out, putting their life on the line to make sure that the country is safe. And all of us have to realize that we all have to play our part as well, no? especially what's happening in the Uh, West Philippine Sea at pati dito sa Benham Rise na nakikita po natin na very um, aggressive yung uh, ginagawang maritime exercises at maneuvers ng China. And going back to that no issue, I think this is another um, realization for us to accept why foreign direct investments will be beneficial to the country, especially in addressing the aggressiveness of China against the Philippines. Wag po natin kakalimutan, when foreign direct investments come into the country, countries become, um, how do you say it, have interest in the Philippines, not only because Uh, we are part of the ASEAN, not only because we are part of the United Nations, but because they have business interests located in the Philippines. And any country would have, with billion-dollar investments in the Philippines would also want to make sure that their investments are protected. So with more foreign direct investments, I think this is another clear way we can address the issue that is happening in the West Philippine Sea. Um, On to your second point, no? Um, yung second point mo was about? Uh, yung U.S. Uh, yeah. mission. So, napakalaking karangalan po ito. It is indeed historic for the Philippines that a trade mission will be sent. And napakaganda din po ng pagkakataon na pumupunta po sila sa panahon na tinatalakay po natin ang pag-aamienda ng ating saligang batas pagdating sa economic provisions. And this is such a welcoming signal for them coming in now that the Philippines is talking about opening up and lifting restrictions 
and allowing foreign direct and more foreign direct investments to come into the country. If I was a businessman and if I was part of the trade mission and I'm going to the Philippines knowing that the constitution will be improved for us to be allowed to invest more, I think that's a green light for, for the trade mission and for those who are part of the trade mission. So, napakalaking uh, karangalan at oportunidad po ito sa ating bansa na sana wag po natin sasayangin. At gusto ko pong kilalanin, of course, yung efforts ng ating Pangulo, um, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, because it is through his numerous uh, visits and, and trips abroad that allowed these trade missions to happen to the country. So again, congratulations to our President. Just to add to that point, no? on the first point, um, I would say yung Okta survey um, the Okta survey results po, no? I would say is uh, very reassuring. Um, very reassuring po na in spite of all the challenges that we've had like, uh, from external man, such as yung challenges natin dito sa West Philippine Sea, or internal, such as yung alleged destabilization, or dun sa ating Mindanao secession, it's good to see that we still have one united image of one united country. Yung our nation undivided, nahita po yan, it speaks of itself in the people na sila mismo willing to defend this country. So definitely very reassuring po yung itong 77% po yun, no? Uh, I think it was char characterized as overwhelming majority. So it is a very welcome news and really um, gives us uh, that uh, drive po no, na we can push through knowing that it would benefit a united country. Now with that said, in relation po, no, to the second question, yung sa FDIs, it uh, really reminds us of yun rin, yung discussions natin sa charter change. Um, in our discussions of RBH 7, na banggit rin, at least dun sa education portion, the question of national identity and patriotism. And mukhang nandito na po yung ating sagot. Na dahil nandito naman po yung uh, whether or not the education would change, patriotism is there, solid pa rin po yung bansa. So it really um, puts into question that sentiment na by changing yung ating um, equity restrictions uh, education that there would be an effect po on patriotism. Kasi nakikita natin, the results the result speak for themselves. Now on the second point po, no, uh, I, just, I guess we'll just echo po yung sinabi ni DSJJ. Uh, ako rin po as minority, nung unang umiikot yung presidente around, uh, as you recall, Binabatikas po Shedig because he would uh, visit a lot of countries. Uh, we questioned the strategy, but now that we see it more coherent, together po with the advice ng mga fiscal managers ng country natin, um, it has been very consistent. The administration has nothing but very has been nothing but consistent. And ngayon nagbubunga na po ito. Nakita po natin first time magkakaroon ng trade mission dito and uh, we welcome this with open arms. And I think it's very timely because as mentioned, we're also talking about RBH7, RBH6 on the part of the Senate. Yung economic charter change po. I think this uh, only renews the call to pass this already so that when we have trade missions such as these, we welcome them with open arms. Kasi po, kung buksan po natin yung equity restrictions, it's like a red carpet po, no? Na talagang welcome po sila. So I think with that, uh, it, we really want to renew the call for this. Uh, yun na po. Uh, before Kong Suwan makes uh, his uh, remarks, uh, I'd like to recognize the presence of majority, House Majority Leader Manuel Luce Manix M. Dalipe. Sir, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Kong Suwan, sir. Regarding the Okta Research Survey, I think the, the result was in the upper 78, 77%. And I would expect nothing less from Filipinos because even though we might, you know, joke around, try to uh, maintain a straight face in the, in the face of adversity, the blood of heroes runs through our veins. And... Um, the very high number of, of uh, respondents who said that they are willing to defend our country only goes to show that national, nationalism and patriotism is still very much alive in Filipinos and that even when we are faced with an impossible task, we don't even think, we just do. Our nobility, our drive to defend our, our country, our sovereignty, our territory is always there. And, and we have seen it firsthand also. And again, this also goes to the, 
this is also related to the to the trade missions of our president because i think that when a country gets more investments it means that the gdp will necessarily have to go up and with that it means that we have more budgets for strengthening our armed forces and and i think that the this is the very first trade mission from the united states and it just goes to show that you have to go out of your comfort zone you have to go out of your own country stir things up make things happen and that's i guess that's one of the the jobs of our president and it has borne fruit and i guess the least that we can do is to help him through the the amendment of economic provisions in our charter which are restrictive and make it easier for foreign investment to come in thank you uh, i'd like to acknowledge mela lismoras from ptb4 Hi, good morning po mga Kong. Uh, unahin ko lang po, ang ipag-relate ko na, uh, specifically for uh, Majority Leader Dalipe, ano po yung expectation at uh, inaasahan natin na magiging usad ng RBH7 this week? At uh, isunod ko na po, uh, other Kongs can also comment. Ngayon nga, uh, may biyahe ulit si Pangulong Marcos patungong Germany. Gaano kaya kahalaga at uh, makakatulong na talaga nga palapit na ng palapit ang kamera sa pagpasan nitong RBH7? Uh, natapos na po yung committee of the whole house. Mayroon na pong uh, committee report. At uh, itong araw, lunes, the committee report of the committee of the whole house will be forwarded to the committee on rules, which I also chair. And the committee on rules, or the chairman of the committee on rules, can now uh, include it in the calendar of business. Ngayong lunes, uh, uh, Martes at uh, Miyerkules. So we will be including it in the calendar of business for second reading. So in expect namin uh, na maraming pwede magtanong. So we are uh, binibigyan natin ng uh, tatlong araw na plenary debates ang ating resolution of both houses number seven. Hindi lang isang araw, hindi lang dalawang araw kung di tatlong araw na debates, deliberation on second reading ang ating resolution of both houses number seven. And hopefully, by Wednesday, we can uh, vote on the matter on second reading. Um, well, unang-una po, nagpapasalamat po ako sa lahat ng mga resource persons na naging bahagi ng pagtatalakay po ng Committee as a Whole. Uh, nakita nyo naman po sa anim o pitong araw na um, pagde-deliberate ng committee as a whole, the hearings were exhaustive, intensive, inclusive, and I think we covered a lot of areas, especially when it comes to education, advertising, um, economic restrictions, um, um, basic principles. So... And I also want to, of course, uh, congratulate our majority leader for, or for facilitating and co-chairing the committee as a whole. Um, nakita naman po natin yung output ng committee as a whole. And we can uh, look forward to uh, heated deliberations on this matter as it hits plenary after the rules act on it. At kami po ng mga sponsors ay magiging handa upang siguraduhin na may paglalaban po namin ito at sana pagdating po ng panahon ng pagbobotohan ay makuha po natin ang suporta ng ating mga mambabatas. Um, to add to that lang po, no, from our perspective, uh, initially yung opening salvo po ng RBH7, there were questions in some quarters of the minority of whether or not mare railroad po ito, but uh, we had the assurance, thankfully, from the leadership under Speaker Romualdez, for uh, DS uh, Suarez and uh, Majo uh, Delipe, and of course, SDS Gonzalez, the three of them were chairmen, and they assured us that it would be exhaustive. And 
they were exhaustive. We would finish our hearings at 10, 11, and talagang they didn't close the day until lahat po nang nakapag-interpolate. So at the very least, we're very happy with the turnout of the results. So um, moving forward into the process, of course, we leave it to our uh, majority floor leaders, sila pong may call dito. But uh, we do ex we are anticipating that the same exhaustive deliberations would be afforded po, no, to the members of minority, that uh, we would have that assurance that we could really thresh out these issues kahit dito po sa uh, plenary deliberations na. Um, with that said, on the second part po, no, the question was about the uh, president going to Germany. So again, yung direction po natin dito sa economic cha-cha, definitely I would, I would think that this would be a uh, battle cry po ng administration in rallying investors po dito. So while we do our part here, although hindi pa po ito tapos, uh, we can expect that this would have uh, far-reaching effects po dun sa pag-invite natin sa investors. Wala pa nga po yung RBH7, marami na po nag-signify ng intent nila to invest here. How much more po that there are now positive signals na we are nearing the end at least for our processes. So uh, yun na po ang masasabi ko. Thank you. R.G. Cruz from ABS-CBN for uh, his question. I just have a follow-up for the majority leader. Um, sir, are you going to adjust yung schedule po ng plenary um, to allow uh, more time for the longer, uh, for, the, for the debates on RBH7? Kasi po, uh, nakita natin doon sa Committee of the Whole, nag-session kayo ng 1, sometimes 10, na umaga. Are we going to see the same uh, dito sa RBH7 plenary? We will uh, resume session at uh, 3 p.m. onward. So depending on the number of uh, interpolators that would be registered with the floor leader, then we will see up to what time we will adjourn session. But definitely we will give all members of the House of Representatives who would want to discuss, interpolate, and uh, debate on the matter, particularly this is their opportune time on official record in the plenary session, inside the plenary hall, that we'll be discussing it. If we compare what we did in the committee of the whole, we needed more time because there were insights that we needed from the resource persons which were new to the House members. So, mas mahaba po yung yung oras doon sa Committee of the Whole House kasi mahaba rin yung mga sagot ng ating mga resource person at we would like to get all the datas and inputs especially from those who have experiences in the global perspective. Since there might be questions that will be repeating or there might be also questions which are new but definitely I'm, I'm so sure that this will not be longer. Based on our experience, the, the plenary sponsorship and debate on second reading of resolution of both houses number seven will be quite a little bit shorter than those compared with the committee of the whole house wherein the resource persons were given more time. So dito, uh, although, uh, we will, we will still exhaustively discuss this. That's why we are giving three days for the uh, debates on second reading. Thank you very much, sir. Just to add, I think that the, the length of time that we are discussing the RBH7 just goes to show that the House is really sincere in you know, coming up with with a good bill, with a good measure that is exhaustively discussed, both sides are really given a chance to air out their their opinions, their uh, their concerns, and I think this is very important for a democracy. So that if this passes, it means that it has gone through a baptism of fire, and that's exactly what we need. It's it's been said that the purpose of argument or discussion should not be victory, but progress. And progress is what we are aiming for in all of our discussions on the economic charter change. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Terence Grana from AUP Radio. Yes, uh, sir, uh, this is for uh, uh, Deputy Speaker Suarez. Uh, you attended noong Sabado dun sa 
uh, we call this yung bagong Pilipinas uh, uh, movement ano? and uh, uh, I, we would like to know kung ano, anong nangyari doon and then probably yung ibang mga congressmen could also give their ano, yes input. um so uh, bahagi po tayo ng mahigit na benteng mambabatas na sumama sa ating uh, House Speaker Martin Romualdez uh, sa Kalapan, Oriental Mindoro. At uh, doon po natin nasaksihan muli ang isang matagumpay na bagong Pilipina servisyo per. Nakita po natin yung tuwa at ligaya ng mahigit uh, 50,000 na mamamayan mula sa probinsya na yon na natulungan ng iba't ibang mga ahensya ng ating pamahalaan. Kung hindi po ako nagkakamali, around 1.2 billion pesos worth of assistance, programs, projects were implemented by various agencies and departments of government. Um, just to name a few, um, 28,000 individuals benefited from the DSWD program of AX. Uh, 9,000 individuals benefited from the program of the Department of Labor and Employment at naka-focus po ito doon sa mga naapektuhan ng oil spill sa Mindoro. Meron din pong 145 million uh, worth of equipment ang naitulong sa 52 farmer cooperatives para sa Department of Agriculture. Meron din pong 7,000 na nakinabang sa ESIP program which is our scholarship assistance. Uh, meron din mga uh, negosyo or start-up businesses na nakatanggap ng kapital mula po sa Sibol. At meron akong isang programang natunghayan na sana po ay uh, maging modelo sa maraming mga probinsya. Ito po yung farm program kung saan nakapagbigay yung pamahalaan ng tulong sa ating mga magsasaka at ginarantiya yung mga magsasaka na yung palay na maani nila ay bibili ng NFA. And I think um, that is such a liberating uh, um, moment for our farmers dahil uh, masisiguro na mabibili sa tamang presyo at hindi sa uh, presyo babaritin sila ng kapitalista. So all in all, it was a successful event. Um, I would like to give my uh, congratulations, to convey my congratulations to uh, Governor Vons Dolor uh, for successfully hosting the Bagong Pilipina Service Affair. And I would also like to extend my uh, congratulations to Congressman Arnan Palanligan uh, of the district who also hosted the event. At uh, ito po ay tuloy-tuloy po nating gagawin sa mga darating na panahon. At kung hindi po ako nagkakamali, ang susunod na bagong Pilipinas service fair ay gaganapin sa Agusan. Kung hindi po ako nagkakamali. So, uh, sometime in the latter part of March. So, this is a clear indication that services are being felt and properly implemented at the grassroots level. Ang sabi nga nung ilang mga nabigyan ng tulong, meron pala, pwede pala. So ito po yung pagpapakita na nasa tamang pamamaraan ng uh, paggastos at paggamit ang pondo ng pamahalaan na direktong, direktang pinakikinabangan ng ating mga kababayan. Any more remarks from our uh, other guests? Just a short uh, addition. It has been proven, even in the past, that the whole of government approach is, is very effective when it comes to services and, and uh, uh, in helping reach out to the grassroots level in the different provinces. And now, uh, we're very happy that uh, President Bongbong Marcos Jr. is continuing in its administration if, in trying to reach out to our, uh, our constituents in the provinces. And uh, the House of Representatives, under the leadership of Speaker Ferdinand Martin Romualdez, is in full support of uh, President Marcos's uh, program in uh, reaching out to the different communities in the provinces. So, as mentioned by uh, De De Deputy Speaker Suarez, this, this will continue, and the members of the House of Representatives 
exercising its oversight function, particularly on those different departments which we supported during the hearing of the budget here, uh, we will uh, continue to monitor and, mo and most especially we will come up with decisions that will help us improve, particularly in the crafting of the next next year's budget, the 2025 budget. So masayang masaya po ko at uh, yung liderato ng uh, Kamara under Speaker Martin Romualdez is there together with the Executive Department, with the President, and we as members of the House, we see firsthand kung ano-ano yung mga departamento, ano-ano yung mga ahensya na pwede na ano-ano uh, yung mga programa ng mga ahensya departamento na pwede natin bigyan pa ng karagdagang pondo at ano-anong pwede i-fine tune at ayusin. Most especially that we will be going into such process the preparation of the budget in the next few months. So this is a very opportune time for us to see there in the provinces, in the different uh, communities, how these programs which we started here in the House of Representatives, particularly in the, the national expenditure program of the different agencies and government is presented and passed by the House of Representatives. So malaking tulong po yan and we are even encouraging all other members of the House of Representatives to join all these uh, Bagong Pilipinas uh, service of air. Kasi nandun na po yung hindi lang isa, dalawa o tatlong departamento ang nandun. Marami pong uh, national agencies and it is, it is a very good uh, chance for the for the House members to observe directly. Ito bang nilagay natin sa budget na programa? For example, the SWD, DOLE, Department of Health, Department of Agriculture, o ano bang departamento? Ha? Ano ba yung epekto niya? So, bilang mambabatas, nakikita po ng mga congressman directly yung uh, actual implementation and they can observe that and probably uh, make more refinements that will benefit the Filipino people in the next fiscal year, the next budget, which is the 2025 budget. Yes, um, just to add to the excellent point uh, mentioned by our majority leader, uh, Manix Dalipe, um, tama po yung sinabi niya na dapat talagang samahan po ito, puntahan po ito ng mga mambabatas because it becomes a learning experience for them. It becomes a learning experience for them, especially when we get to the process of um, analyzing and, and scrutinizing the 2025 budget. Kasi doon mo makikita kung paano ito na-implement sa ground. Kasi marami sa aming mga mambabatas, limitado lamang, yung information doon sa distrito namin. Kasi once you venture out to other district and to other province and realize how programs and projects are being implemented and how effective they are, then you'll get a better grasp of the entirety of the effectiveness of certain programs and projects and therefore decide uh, how we can further fine tune some of this so that they can be more effective as we progress into another year of governance in 2025. So again, uh, yes, tama po yung sinabi ni Majority Leader tungkol doon. Uh, at natutuwa po kami na marami na naman po mambabatas ang sumama kay Speaker Martin Romualdez. Similar po doon sa pagbisita po namin sa Sultan Kudarat kung saan mahigit uh, 50 ang uh, kinatawan. Ang sumama dito po ay hindi bababa sa 20 kinatawan mula po sa Region 4A and 4B ang sumama sa ating uh, speaker. Thank you. Um, Kenneth Basilio from Business World for your questions. This question is directed to ano po, Congressman Suwan. Uh, to preface, I just noticed that uh, yung Magna Carta for micro, small, and medium enterprises is now pending with the Rules Committee last week. Uh, sir, I would just like to ask, bilang isa sa mga principal authors, uh, ano yung mga pinakamahalagang addition dito sa kumita report nga ng Magna Carta on MSMEs? I think it would be wise to uh, have the, the chairman of the committee defend it himself. It would, uh, I don't want to preempt him. Okay. Uh, 
sa ano naman po. May ang um, sinabi po, on your capacity po bilang Eh sorry, okay na po pala. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, for today's last question, uh, may I call on uh, Big Sumintak from Net25. Sir, going back to RBH number 7. Sir, going back to RBH number 7. Dito po sa house, eh, nakikita natin masigasig ang mga mambabatas natin para tapusin ang RBH 7 on or before the summer break ng session pero sa Senado mukhang malabo doon sa pakayag ni Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri na maipasa nilang kanilang RBH number 6 before the uh, session break so may we know what will happen next kung hindi nila maipasa yung RBH number 6 nila as of now, that's uh, still speculative. We want to still believe that the Senate will be able to pass it. So, yun, yun nung paniniwala namin. Kaya nga, when the President said, when the uh, President uh, Bongbong Marco said, the Senate will take the lead and the House will follow, so the House, with diligence and determination, we work on it. We work hard, we work... Uh, Double time, we work overtime to pass RBH number seven. And uh, I'm sure in the next uh, three days, this week, we will be again tackling each and every aspect of uh, RBH number seven. And uh, yung paniniwala namin, kasi ito namang RBH number seven, was just patterned after the RBH number six of the Senate. Then we, ang assumption po namin, that the Senate will also be able to to pass it just like uh, how we did in the House of Representatives. So right now, ang paniniwala po ng uh, mga members ng House ay may papasa naman to din ng Senado. Okay. Uh, we kindly request our uh, guests for their uh, closing remarks. If you have any, um, um, DSJJ. Again, uh, thank you so much to our partners in media for joining us today. Um, on, it was a very um, busy week for us that has passed. And again, over the weekend, nakita po natin yung tagumpay ng uh, uh, Bagong Pilipinas Servicio Fair. Um, this week, again, will be very busy for the House because we will be tackling a lot of bills, which I think uh, the majority leader would like to uh, discuss furthermore. But regard with regards to um, certain uh, national interests, or, or no, interests of national in perspective, um, be rest assured that Congress will be uh, addressing all of them uh, through our various committee hearings. At umasa po kayo na patuloy pa rin uh, magiging uh, masigasig ang ating uh, kongreso upang tugunan ang suliranin na hinaharap ng bawat Pilipino. Okay. Congrats. Um, again, thank you to our media friends for having us here, giving us opportunity to share uh, whatever input that you may have uh, of us. With the indulgence of our uh, colleagues here, I'd just like to make a short uh, statement lang po, no, kasi this was brought up a few press cons ago dun sa Motorcycle for Hire Act. Uh, we are very pleased to report that we had our first deliberation on the report ng Technical Working Group last Thursday. For lack of material time lang, dahil may inquiry pa po dun sa fuel subsidy and inquiry dun sa LTMS, yung uh, land transportation portal, uh, nakulangan pa ng oras. But we were assured by the committee that we will be having our uh, continued deliberation on that this Wednesday. So as for the original time frame na sinabi natin na baka by the end, uh, definitely before recess po ng uh, Holy Week recess, uh, I think we will be passing already dito sa committee. 
and the committee has given their assurance in po that before SONA, at least the house, uh, house version will be passed. So with that, I would like to extend an invitation. Alam po namin yung colleagues natin sa Senate are also working on their counterpart bill, but we extend this invitation that they work on it soon and uh, as quickly as possible. This is the third Congress already to tackle this bill, and we're hoping that we would be, submit we would be able to finish this PONO as with the prioritization by the President uh, BBM and with uh, the call of uh, Speaker Martin Romaldes. Uh, po. Thank you. Oh. Okay, anyway, thank you. Uh, this will be a very busy week for the House, three days of uh, plenary sponsorship and debates, uh, three days. And the House of Representatives, ever, since uh, in time immemorial, has always shown that we really work hard, uh, double time, on uh, taking up all these measures. Whether it is uh, LEDAC priority measures or it is the priority measures suggested by the President of the Philippines, the House will uh, really work fast because as, as we always say, ang mga miyembro po ng uh, Kamara ay meron lang kaming tatlong taon. So hindi kami pwede patulog-tulog, hindi po pwede kaming uh, pabagal-bagal. So we really have to work and act fast on uh, legislative matters. So in the next three days, we will uh, again do our work double time over time in uh, tackling RBH number seven. And hopefully by the break, we will be able to uh, submit it and uh, finish it. And uh, hopefully also, when we come back before the CNED adjournment, we will also be finishing other uh, measures which are of uh, equal importance and uh, of help to our country. So, yun na lang po, and uh, thank you very much. Uh... Thank you, House Majority Leader Mannix, uh, Deputy Speaker uh, JJ, Congressman Rods, and Congressman um, Lordan. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Pagandang umaga po.